I was a victim of my own success, and I did some Ed Sullivans I hate. On those Ed Sullivan shows, I began to realize, uh, not just there, everywhere, all these shows, I didn't fit. And here's what I was missing. I was missing who I was. I began with a dream of being Danny Kay, which is a very mainstream dream. It's very middle America. It's a people pleaser job. And I dreamed a path that was traditional. Comedian, uh, disc jockey, comedian, actor, big success. A mainstream dream. Meanwhile, what I really was, was an outlaw and a rebel because I had lived that kind of life. I got kicked out of three different schools. I got kicked out of the Air Force. I got kicked out of the choir. I got kicked out of the altar boys. I got kicked out of summer camp. I got kicked out of the Boy Scouts. And I quit school at ninth grade. I had great marks. I was a smart kid, but I didn't care. They weren't teaching what I want. I didn't give a shit. It's important in life if you don't give a shit. It can help you a lot. So I didn't give a shit. And I was this kind of, I was a pot smoker when I was 13. We broke the law, we broke into cars, we broke into offices, we broke into Columbia University, we broke into stores. We did all sorts of unlawful things. And I was that kind of person. I was one who swam against the tide of what is expected and what, is, uh, what the establishment wants from us. But I didn't know that about myself, because this dream blinded me. This dream was about America, about the path that we all follow, the middle of the road, middle class, America, mainstream, will dream. And, and being, meanwhile, I'm sitting there like this, you know, fuck those people, fuck that shit. Look at this stupid shit. No, I don't want to be in the bunny number. Can I get out of the bunny number, please? I don't want to put on that <laughs> fucking uniform. You know, and, and, and I didn't know this dissonance was inside me, and... In the period this is happening, all through the 60s, the counterculture was forming. The free speech movement started in Berkeley. The hippies were growing into a force. And peace, love, power, love, flower power, pot smoking, anti-authority. See, bing, 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 anti-authority. Throw over the establishment. Burn down the math building? Wow! Ding, 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 ding. So I gravitated toward that because I was that person, really. And, and the people I hung around with were that way. The, the musicians I knew in the late 50s had gone through that transition. Suddenly they looked different and their music changed. And I'm listening to people like the Buffalo Springfield. I'm listening to Bob Dylan. I'm listening to these people and I realize these artists are using their talent to project their feelings and ideas, not just please people. And I suddenly was able to see my place and to realize I was in the wrong place. You see, in 1967, the summer of love, the peak of the hippie movement, I was 30. I was entertaining people in nightclubs who were 40. And they were at war with their kids who were 20. There was a generation war. I was in the middle of it. I was 30, 20, 40. And I'm going, I say, what the fuck am I doing over here? These are the people that will at least understand me and give me a chance. So it took two years. I didn't go to the mountain and come back different. I didn't do a Bobby Darren. I didn't do a whatever, you know, those people who just go away and they're back new suddenly. I took two years to change and it happened on television. So it was, it, I, had, I had denied that part of myself and finally it came into full flower. And I never became a really big success until that. Mm -hmm. I probably had uh, 200 television appearances by that time. And I still wasn't realized. As a, as a writer, comedian, as a comedian. I, I, by that I mean I hadn't let myself grow into that. And, and I found out later I, I was more than just a comedian.